And welcome back to another GAC podcast where we're going to be discussing games, anime, computers, and collectibles, but not necessarily all those in one week. I am still your host, Harrison, and to my left, James, and to my right, where the hell are we? Uh, <laughs> I'm fast. Yeah, where are we? I think we're in a bar. Oh, looks uh, like yeah, we're we in a are. Bar. Yeah, we're at the... Uh, He's got a drink. Yeah, we're in a bar. Yeah, we're in a bar. Yeah, we're in a bar. Okay. I got... Uh, well, no, no, that doesn't matter because we've had beers before, not in a bar. So, are we at... Are we at the regular place, or are we at a, a bar? Um, I I don't think this is a Lizard know. Tail Brewery. We're at Lizard Tail Brewery. Yes, mm-hmm. Lizard okay. Tail Brewery. I know you guys kid, Matt kidnapped me from my house, put a bag over my head, and drove me over here, and then just basically sat down and said, "We're recording a show," so I didn't get to see anything. <laughs> we put a bag over your head like every week because that's what we like to do. <laughs> so yeah, and you like it. I like it. Yeah, it's it's a fetish. Yes. Anyway, so. We're going to go over some of the stuff of the week and put our thoughts into it and everything else like that. But one of the big, but before we get into that, it's like one of the big reasons why we're doing this here at the Lizard Tail Brewery is because, you know, we're at a year of doing podcasts. Yep. So yeah. apparently somebody's been listening to us for a year on, <laughs> uh, on YouTube and on VidMe and everything else. Yep. I don't know how many local people have been hearing us. Now, granted, there's about three people in the bar right now, so they're forced to listen to us. Yeah. You know. Nothing like a captive audience. Yes. So, <laughs> you know. Welcome you, to the show, guys, by the way. Yes. Yeah. The, um, but yeah, it's it's been interesting, you yeah. know. It has been a wild year. Uh, we've covered a lot of really great stories and uh, been at it. This is the, you know, 52 shows. I didn't think we'd be at it for a year. No. Really. I thought we'd have we have switched it up or done something different, but nope, we've just been sitting here stagnating for a year straight. Well, the interesting thing is when I look at the statistics, it's like the people that listen to us are like California. Mm -hmm. uh, We got the United Kingdom. We have Canada. A yeah yeah. So, but you know, when it comes down when it comes down to Albuquerque, it's like we say we tell all of our buddies like, hey, we're doing something, and it's look at all of our buddies here, all of our buddies. Yeah. Yes, we're a yeah. local podcast. We're a local podcast. Local yeah. podcast. So, er, so people we know here, even local subscriber, you know, local local subscribers, it's like, oh, welcome to New Mexico, the <laughs> land of manana. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we put, we put it out there, and maybe some people might filter in while we're recording, but we have a time slot. We have to fill it. Yeah, we've got a show to do. Um, and you had to. I'm sorry. How do you choose what to talk about? Uh, for for the podcast, you, we we all spend a week going through different news feeds and sites and putting okay. something up in a central area. That's cool. Yeah, That's and cool. then yeah, and then we come in together and we go. No, we never read anything anybody else posted, so we we look it up and kind of go through it together. Yeah, we might we might go over some stuff with the audience today because this is such a um, this is a different venue for us typically. Um, but one of the things I actually want to talk about first off is I want to talk about Twitter. Uh huh. Okay, because. Twitter is such a big thing as social media. And I, I need to preface this because we're not talking politics. Okay. So this is what, what we're going to be talking about is there's, th- this is a, this is an issue with uh, social media and freedom of speech. Mm-hmm. Okay. So currently, you know, the article that's going around, because, you know, if you put Trump in an article, people are going to read it is there's a group of people suing Donald Trump because he's blocked people on Twitter and they're saying he can't do that because it violates the First Amendment right. So that's what the article says. But this is this is an issue about technology, which is what's really interesting. I don't want to get into the politics about this. Yeah. Um, and what's what's interesting about this is this is uh, what's coming down to it is they're saying these are publicly elected officials. OK. And these are publicly elected officials that. Uh, are blocking people uh, and it doesn't matter and, and so the argument is this is a public forum so why are we why are we going to be blocking uh, why are you blocking us so we cannot uh, present our argument in you know discontent now yeah. granted I don't know how good of an argument you can get in 140 characters but <laughs> <laughs> on Twitter well I mean people get in these really heated back and forth and a lot of people actually do use Twitter as, as sort of a means of getting information or checking in with their celebrities and getting just like bite-sized microblogs, not having to read paragraphs and pages. 
Right. So, I mean, I can understand that um, something of a public forum where people are able to pay attention to that. The thing is, you know, Twitter is not classified as a service. It's not, you know, something that is provided by a country or a government for the people. Twitter is a private company. Yeah. And there's, I mean, you, you said earlier that there is a precedent already where uh, apparently Facebook, some people being blocked on Facebook, that's actually a violation of First Amendment rights. Well, that, yeah, because there's already a previous court case that's been done where a, uh, a, public, a publicly elected official was, uh, it was ruled against that he can't block people because it was considered a public forum. Mm -hmm. So this is like an evolution of like social media, basically, at this point. It's weird that the courts are saying that publicly elected officials cannot block themselves, cannot be blocked, uh, or cannot block people on a private company's website mm -hmm. that is basically presenting themselves out to the uh, the public, you know, for people to communicate. So that's that's where it's kind of mind blowing, you know, mm. in some aspects there. Now, my thing with all this is, what's going to end up happening with companies? Because that's that's the next thing. Because sure, right now it's it's, it's easy to go after the the publicly elected officials, but what's going to happen with when companies are blocking people like well that's already been happening i mean yeah. especially if a company has some rather popular social media expert and you know like there was the whole um the, not really a debacle but the whole event where wendy's was throwing some real shade around at other companies and people were just sitting there egging it on egging it on egging it on and apparently that I mean that social media person had to block a few people just because they kept on promoting it and keeping it going yeah and so i mean that blocking somebody is an, a real thing that's provided by Twitter, I was hello. The show. Um, so it's a, it's a it's an aspect of, of Twitter that they they know was necessary that they added it in. Right, that you can block somebody because it's like okay, you're getting too far into it, or you're being too abusive, or you're just sitting there causing problems. You're not actually facilitating discussion. Well, yeah, and in, in town halls, people have been kicked out of town halls before too because mm -hmm. of being disruptive. But here's here's my thing. Do um, Let's, let's say we look at this from the business angle. Let's say you are using a product, okay? Yeah. Or if you are using a, um, you know, using a service. Mm -hmm. And that support, like that Twitter support, that's supposed to be, you're supposed to be able to use to like get questions for support or complain or something. If they block you because you are being surly at the very least. Yeah. You know, how's that going to come down to it when that comes into the legal system? You know? I don't know. I mean, this is a really kind of a gray a gray area where the legality is going to set precedent for time to come. Right. You know, it's going to be something that needs to be done. Um, just it's a conversation that needs to be had. But really, there's going to be people falling all at all points along the spectrum. Right. So um, at this point, I'm not sure how I feel about it personally, because, well, yeah, somebody like the president or a public official blocks you on on Twitter. You aren't if somebody's blocking you, that means you're not allowed to see anything that they say. Yes. You, you are prevented from seeing what they say. You are prevented from replying to what they say. It basically knocks you out of the conversation as far as they're concerned. Right. Well, the same the same thing ends up happening with, uh, you know, let's say a Twitter that's used for public service. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say let's say it's like uh, an internet service provider, and they put out a tweet saying there's a there's a problem, or we're doing an upgrade, or we're doing a special deal, or something like that, and you are blocked from seeing that. Mm -hmm. Are you? Are you not getting the quality of service you're supposed to get? That's that's an interesting I, question, isn't it? I mean, I would I would say that that's not exactly. Once again, I have to go back to Twitter is a private company. These these companies provide a service, and people pay them, or advertisers pay them to make sure that they're seen. You know, the fact that uh, some public official or celebrity utilizes that and blocks people that they find unsavory or not adding to the conversation that they're trying to facilitate is one thing but the other side of it is this is a public official in in particular who is utilizing twitter aside from all else he's not using press briefings he's not using it news uh but we're talking news briefings he's not using conferences he's not making public statements he's not doing fireside chats but he's, he's he's using one service entirely no 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 yeah public officials do use multiple services yeah i mean because that's that's yeah, but the thing the thing about it is everybody's going off about this one twitter account yeah. And that's the only thing that we have as far as a communication, a personal line into this man's mind. No, you have this more is, than that. No, this, he, is, the has, yeah, that, this is the only thing I see in the news any other time. Donald Trump tweeted. <laughs> I swear, I, I, I see that more than anything else. Every single news company is following his Twitter. And if they say something wrong, he cuts them out. 
So in this case, they do kind of have a right to say it because if that's the only way he's going to talk to the people, then he can't block everybody. He can't block anybody from being able to see it. So w- without getting this into being just Donald Trump, I actually yeah. want to. A- I actually want to ask something of the people in the bar. So yeah. So the people at the bar, if they care, if they care, how many people think that your publicly elected officials should uh, have the right to block you on on Facebook or Twitter? Mm-hmm. You know, you can go yeah. You know, if you think they can block you no okay so you think they should you think they should yeah so i can see that yeah a lot but a lot of them start as personal accounts and then they get elected you know so where's the line there so government monitors so public so public officials it seems like some people are saying no they should be able to block you Mm -hmm. now here's the question like i said this is going to potentially go over to business if this, if this goes over to business, who thinks that a company like Comcast should be able to block you on Twitter or Facebook? Yeah, I mean, Comcast probably blocks people left, right, and center just because they're the company that they are. And they try to do this. They, they provide the service that they do. There's always... <laughs> Because somebody should be like, are they being malicious on purpose? Not just because they got their feelings hurt. All mm. That's yeah. it's one of those. It's it's a gray area. It's where a gray kinda, area. They have to set the precedent, and we're probably going to see this one of those things where new legislation is going to identify: is this a reason to be blocked or not? If it's against the terms of service, you know, they're going to have to com- the companies like Twitter that provide these services are going to have to rewrite their rules, right? And people who utilize these services for a public forum are going to have to realize that they are they are not provide they're not they're what? going to have to have a separate terms of service. What's up, sir? I no, I don't need any food. I'm yeah. sitting up here. I got my coffee. We got beer. You yeah, know. I'll take. We, it. Got, we got. Who needs food? We got beer. Oh my gosh, you <laughs> spoke, James. <laughs> wow, you said something. You said something. You said something. Give him a. Give him a hand. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, getting off of their political rant there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you guys checked out the Asus GTX 1070, that box that you posted, gaming box. Let's see the Eorus. Yours, not Asus. Gaming box. Aeros, GTX 1070 gaming box. The the yes. gig, so the gigabyte graphics card that sits in a box. Uh huh. That's what happens every time you buy a new graphics card. It sits yes, in a box. Yes, but this allows you to boost your gaming laptop performance to have it match the desktop. So this is a sidecar for your laptop. Mm-hmm. Essentially, you're getting a sidecar. Why because do you need a box? No, no, no. That defeats the purpose of a laptop. Why do you need a box to carry around with your with your laptop? To increase your graphics. Well, I think this is to have like play. a home thing. I think what they're trying to facilitate is the whole Nintendo Switch idea where you have a laptop that you can take with you and be produ- productive, but then you come home and you slot that in to something like this, sort of a, a an all-in-one base station that ups the, cra- the, gra- the capabilities of it and provides you know more space, better graphics, that kind of thing. What? No. No, I do not agree with this. I mean, you should never be spending five hundred dollars in addition to your laptop to put in a Laptops. gaming card on the side. It takes its own separate power and USB and yeah. everything else. That's where the that's where the breakdown happens. Like, if you're a gamer and you're buying a laptop, you're going to buy a laptop you can game on. Exactly. That's just what happens. So you're already dropping in in some cases three four thousand dollars on a laptop. nine thousand for a twenty one inch. Yeah, nine thousand for you know going really overboard. So. Getting a box like that, where it's just it's just a graphical engine, it's just a it's just a graphics card in a box. That's adding on to the cost of something that's already that's supposed to be as adequate as you need it to be. But it's for people who don't have that top in line gaming laptop. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. uh, but uh, okay. Uh, so yeah. the problem five hundred dollars, you can get something to solve your problem. Yeah, that's, something else. That's the thing is yeah. is you have to have a Thunderbolt port, okay, and you got to have usually a a thousand dollar plus laptop. To have a Thunderbolt port to even attach an extra graphics card. So at this point, you're up to fifteen hundred dollars. Okay, if you're gonna want that, you know, I don't see, I don't see why you need that. What if you already bought the laptop and bought this down the road? A laptop with a Thunderbolt port, and then maybe you buy this down the road. Yeah, I still don't know because then it defeats the purpose of a laptop. A laptop's designed to be portable. Okay, why are you gonna be sitting there gaming on your laptop at home? With that, are you going to pick well, it up with you and bring it to a land party? Well, I think we need to realize. Going to go to your friend's house? You Come might. on, how I many how need... many nerds get out of their house nowadays, guys? I how many we... nerds get out of their house when they want to go gaming? This is not the old I don't, days. I don't we know. Come someplace. Okay. We're outside and about. I need. We are. 
I need to kind of slow your roll there because oh, we, we need to realize exactly how privileged we are that we have desk stations and laptops that are capable of running video games. Some people only have a choice between either or. Some people have to deal with whatever it is that they can get. You know, and most gamers probably are only doing that because of the cost of consoles these days and the cost of retail video games that don't come up to muster and the fact that they have to constantly keep up to date with that stuff. A lot of people are throwing a lot of income into, into gaming and they have to make do with whatever it is they can get their hands on. So this might be the, that, this might be kind of speaking to that niche where it's like, you know what, if you have a laptop and you don't have enough to upgrade it to another $2,000 laptop, here's something that can add to the capability of it and you still have a and processor your performance. I, I think this is too soon, and I don't think this is a, this a niche market. Because if you're doing it right with a laptop, you're going to make it so that you can slot in a different graphics card into mm -hmm. that laptop. A lot, a lot of the higher-end graphics cards right now in laptops... You can you can change them out between a couple of different a couple of different graphics cards. Uh, Dell does it with some of theirs, where you can actually replace the graphics card. Once you can pop pop that door open, change our graphics card there into a universal slot. That's going to be more. Uh, well, I mean, technically, you can do that if you build your own box and you're able to slot stuff. Together. But but in a laptop. In a laptop, yeah, modularity in a laptop has always been a kind of pipe dream. Like yeah. they don't they don't want to be they want to provide something like that and prevent people from going through an upgrade cycle that's the thing that keeps laptops viable as far as production standard interesting yeah the fact that people have to constantly buy new newer and newer ones if they were modular like anything else i mean i've seen people build them from scratch but that gets that's, really that gets really sticky as far as just the definition of a laptop right. or a portable computer is concerned though the days of land boxes come and go uh so I mean, in this in this day and age, yeah, I, I admit it, it's a little it's a little iffy, but it's still it could be just testing the water to see if there is in fact a niche. Yep. Per se. Really. Um, yeah. I think it's good. Huh. Now, in the in the realm of, of affordable gaming, I do have to point out one thing: Facebook has unveiled plans to release a two hundred dollar wireless Oculus VR headset by twenty eighteen. That's twenty eighteen though. It's like okay, yeah. so is. A wireless Oculus for two hundred dollars. Does mm -hmm. this mean that VR is not working? So, it means what? What they've basically identified is that there is. I mean, there are only right now two levels to VR gaming. There's the headsets that you clip your phone into that provide some sort of VR experience, oh, really? and then there are the massive computer peripherals that you hook into a computer capable of running those things, and they and those cost upwards of five hundred dollars. Not to mention making sure that your computer is capable of running VR. So there's, yeah. there's this, this thing where it's like you can spend 50 bucks on a really crappy VR experience, or you can drop 500 plus but, on up, to, up to like $2,000, $4,000 to, to get a full VR experience. And they said there's this, this niche here where it's $200, it's Oculus technology, it's uh, wireless, it doesn't require a computer. So, so it's, okay, it's, so it's a smartphone. It's, it's going it, to be... It's a, it's a $200 smartphone built for VR. I, yeah, pretty much. Well, I have two words for you. Virtual boy. This Virtu sounds like a virtual boy. No, no, no. It's, it's I, got, I got that one here in a second. Yeah. That's called Wonder. Yeah. Ah. 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 So, I got a question. For, I got a question for the audience, if if they care. Yeah. Um, how many How many folks in here have actually used virtual reality on their phones? One. We got We got one. Two, including me. Two. You're on the show. You don't count. <laughs> <laughs> I don't matter. So, well, the VR system's kind of a joke, dude. Sorry, it's kind of like it's it's just like the Virtual Boy. There's not enough games for it. There's not enough. It's it's sad. It's sad. But virtual reality is more than just games. Like virtual reality can be used for watching movies on your phone mm -hmm. uh, on essentially a big screen. Mm -hmm. You can watch them in 3D. You can take uh, 3D tours or of uh, of houses. There, there's practical applications of it, and yet, and yet. You know, it's still not taking off. And I, think, I think the problem is that we've, we've been dealing with technology in a 2D medium for so long. I mean, even if you say that there are games that are 3D, there are, there are viewports that are 3D. I mean, all of that is sort of just side technology or niche. Everything that, that's been displayed on a screen is 2D. I mean, it's people that people read, they look at comics, they look at pictures, they watch movies, true. But making things 3D almost always, I mean, people complain that it makes them sick or it gives them eye strain. And when it comes to the VR headset technology, even using, using something like the phone, it still affects the equilibrium. It still, it still shuts out the senses too much. So I think what we're starting to hit is sort of... Mm. 
Mm. So, so you had a you had a negative experience in PlayStation VR. Yeah, Yeah. because it's bad. You get motion sick. So everything looks bad at six feet on VR for the PlayStation. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, really, and that's the problem. Is like you know they're trying to think of a way that they can implement this technology, and it's just not coming to fruition. You know, they were trying to say that they can port games over to VR and people would have this grand new experience. And you know, these games are com- this VR support is coming out slowly but surely. It's just you know adopting that technology, making it available to people, and developing for that technology is becoming too difficult. Especially with stuff like you know Facebook and Bethesda can't seem to keep out of the courtroom when it comes to this stuff. Well, so that's, Oculus is kind of Oculus, the big forerunner, has been that's sort of because they're, that's because they're having like a big old dick waving you know fight yeah. there. So, but, I mean, and the only time I really see anything like the Vive or the PSVR is it's some YouTuber showing off some niche game that's just basically more entertaining to watch somebody else play instead of. So that's that's the thing basically is like VR is fun to watch but not not mm-hmm. to use what it sounds like. Now this the thing that we were covering here two hundred dollar wireless Oculus VR. Yep. You don't need to upgrade your computer. It's its own thing. It, it they are. It's a cell phone. You can you can work without being tethered to phone or PC. Um, oh, so it's a cell phone. They don't pay for cell phone service. It's, yeah, it doesn't have cell phone service on it. But two hundred dollars to try out VR from people who made VR. Instead of some headset that's supposed to like pseudo manage it somehow, if you get the alignment right and your eyes are perfect or whatever, like this, this is actual Oculus VR available at an affordable sweet spot, is what they're calling it. Two hundred dollars to try out VR. Mm-hmm. You know what you can do? You go get some cardboard, you stick your phone in, and go Google, <laughs> and guess what? My it's cheaper. My experience with those headset, those those VR headsets on the phones, is completely outline like it, it, it it's horrible it's horrible it pushes you away from vr because trying to get it to work on your phone trying to find a way to interface with your phone while you're using it um the things that are available and the fact that and how your phone runs them they just don't work they, well they i don't know how i don't know how samsung is selling it to say that this is this is really great experience maybe if you have a gear phone and a gear headset that might be the thing that makes the difference but Right now, it just seems like that's just making it worse for VR. The fact that these phone headsets are coming out a dime a dozen and that they're really horribly made and really horribly implemented and trying to make them work is a pain in the ass. Well, that's that's the thing with all this is you know, it's like you got the VR, then you have like Microsoft has augmented reality, so you're still grounded in reality. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you have Apple going towards augmented reality. And then you have another company coming up called Wonder. Uh, is while, that, we found out that's while, what it is. It's, it's it is it's VR or augmented reality. They are playing with it right now. Um, They're being very tight lipped. They are being very tight lipped. Yeah, because they don't want it messed with. So yeah, w- Wonder, as far as we know, is is a very stealth. They call it a stealth startup gaming company. Mm-hmm. They have people gaming hardware company. G- yeah, they are, they are asking people to sign up for their alpha program, and the few, lucky few will get chosen to actually get the reveal of whatever it is they happen to be up to. But right now, we have no specs. We have no idea what they're doing. We have no idea what they're coming out with. We don't know what they're developing. You know what? I still am willing to support support them because they got some they got some big uh, they got some big people behind them in the industry. Mm-hmm. But Kevin Spacey invested in Wonder. Yeah. Okay. Kevin Spacey invested. A couple of football players, Shakira. Shakira. Uh, yeah. Team is also notably blacked by Jin by Joe Lonsdale's reincarnated ABC and Graycroft Partners. Yeah. So that must be some big investment firm. But yeah, they have they even with all of this lack of information, they have increased they have raised about fourteen million dollars in funding as of this recording. I wonder if the tech demo is going to be Shakira doing a music video, you know? I'd I'd go for that. Uh, Of course, people are evoking things like uh, the Nokia N-Gage. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Like like, We've seen this before where they kind of like, it's coming. We're not going to tell you what it is. And then something like the N-Gage, you know, that that horrible taco phone. No, no. The taco phone at least came out. (laughs) Right now, I mean, it's we we have to to wait to see a product because right now there's the, uh, remember the Phantom console? That was true vaporware. It was called the Phantom, and then it didn't get released. Yeah, okay, quite aptly yep. named. Yeah. Yes, best yeah, market. I do remember that. Best marketing in the world. <laughs> it's like we're going to make a console called the Phantom, and then we're never going to release it. <laughs> Just gone. <laughs> well, vaporware at its finest. Yep. So, so that's uh, so, so yeah. But that's that's wonders. That's basically it. Like you know, covering wonder. 
Wonder. I wonder. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder. If what's going to happen. Yes, I wonder about wonder. <laughs> um, and I'm even in the alpha program, and there's still nothing right now. So going from technology that's just coming out, let's go to technology that died quite recently. Technology that died. Yeah. So Microsoft has officially pulled support for Windows phones. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Windows Phone 8.1 lost I, its support I don't, I don't, this week. I don't know anybody that's ever actually used a Windows phone. Yeah, I do. If somebody in here has used a Windows phone and can show and you know, prove that you use a Windows phone, I'll probably, or even willing to admit that they use a Windows phone, I'll give them a shirt right now. <laughs> okay. If somebody's willing to speak up. You, wait, wait. You need to prove it. Prove it. Prove I, it. I, yeah. I made a program for a Windows phone. Wait a minute. Can we verify this? That you've made a. Pr- is it on the store? It's. On the store. it's so the, oh my gosh! One of the audio managers have, has written a program for the for the Windows Phone that's on the store. Scar, Scar. Somebody's wrote a Windows Phone. Wow. Let's so see here. we're going to check this out here. What was this program Scar supposed to do? And was it was recipes. it was recipes for a Windows Phone? Were you the only one that downloaded it, sir? S C A R. Yeah. It's not listed. It's not listed. I had to do it for a programming class. You had to do it for a programming class. That's why it's not listed. For all three platforms. Oh gosh, they forced they forced you to program on the Windows Phone in school. Oh, oh man. man, that deserves a shirt. Yeah. So Windows, it's Android and uh, uh, iOS. Do we got it? Do we extra large? We got an extra large shirt. You think you <laughs> think that'll fit you? Yeah. <laughs> Probably, not. Probably, Probably not. not. Yeah. That's the largest I got though. So, so yeah, but uh, apparently now, yeah, if you have a Windows Phone support, full support for it, the operating system is going to end in 2018. But right and now, they have, they're not putting out any more devices. They're not putting out any more updates. Because it failed. Basically, Windows, yeah, uh, Windows 10 Mobile will be supported in 2018, but not that they're, they're pushing people off those devices. Well, good. Yeah. That was, my gosh, that was such that was such a horrible thing. But, I mean, Microsoft, give them credit. Microsoft has has tried and killed stuff before, so it's not the first product they're killing. Mm-hmm. They just realized that they can't do well in the mobile market. So. Yeah, it makes, it yeah. makes sense, really. I mean, you know, market is already HP's flooded. HP's that tablet? The WebOS? WebOS. Oh, man, there's a name I haven't heard in, for in a while. So, yeah. I, I mean, a market that's flooded between Android and iOS that are constantly battling and sharing back and forth the, the market share. It's just whenever they come out with a new update or a new a new device that pushes the envelope a little bit, all of a sudden the market share kind of flops over, but it just keeps moving back and forth. Well, yeah, this, this is an interesting one, though, because, I mean, it's very rare you see Microsoft pull the plug on something that Apple's winning at. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, they usually, they usually keep their hand in, you know, until it gets scalded down to the bone. And apparently it has there. Mm-hmm. So... With uh, with smartphones, one of the things we have going on is we have like uh, was it you have your your Google Assistant, you have Cortana on the Microsoft, and you have Siri uh, on iOS. Siri, you have uh, and you have Alexa. And there's so, also uh, modules to turn Raspberry Pis into customizable right assistants now. So you have this on the smartphone, and then you have the actual devices like the Alexa you can put in the house. Mm-hmm. You have your and Alexas, Google Home. How, your Echoes, your Google Homes. Yep. So my yep. question, my question is, how many here, how many people here actually have some sort of home smart device. You using a? We got we got one person. With, you have an Alexa. We have one person with an Alexa. Anybody else have a smart device in here? Google Home, Alexa, Dot Alexa. Got a couple. Yeah. So, did you all hear about the Al- the Albuquerque story where Alexa or one of the smart home devices called called the cops for a domestic dispute? For a domestic dispute. Yeah, yeah that was that was like about a week ago. Yeah. yeah, beginning of the week. Well, this is the end of the week. You know. <laughs> So yeah, right. so it's it's very interesting. From uh, you know, what was this? Uh, basically, there was a dispute that went on. Somebody somebody pulled pulled a gun, and the air person was like, "Do you want me to call the cops?" Alexa goes, "It was Alexa or Google Home." They didn't say which one, but it was a smart home device, and it was they said, and it goes, "I'm calling," you know, and it called it the cops. Called the cops. Because yeah. Somebody said, "You going to call the cops?" They called the cops. Now and this is one of those times you look at it and you go, "You got something to say, sir?" Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is a smart device. Yeah, BlackBerry Curve. That's that's yeah, one you don't hear it's about. It's still very smart looking. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> most people go, oh, this is a good thing to have a smart device in your home. But the thing is, also, if you think about it, 
this is like Hal. Hal just said, I'm sorry, Dave, you can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> And I so can't, I can't allow you to pull a gun in the house. Yeah. And they called the cops. I mean, <laughs> tin foil hat. Well, that is a privacy thing in some aspects too. It's like you invite the smart device into your house. You do something. Mm-hmm. It calls, it calls the cops. And this, you know, it's just like, uh, well, granted, it was in a d- domestic dispute this time. But next time, let's say you end up saying something that's like, you know, you get in a fight with somebody and you use some heated words and like, you know, it's like, are you worried that you you afraid it's going to go all 1984 and just call Nin- because it hears some elevated temper tempers and yeah, I don't think that's going to be this is this is a freak occurrence where somebody said some gave a command and a machine followed a command. I mean, my grandmother keeps her Echo Dot in front of her television. Whenever the Alexa commercial comes on, that thing lights up, and I swear it's sending usage statistics going. They're watching TV again, or something like that, because anytime you say Alexa, it lights up. You can change the name now, though. You can change the name that you give it. So apparently you can change Alexa to do other things like, you know, hello computer or something else like that. But it's just, it's just so amazing seeing, seeing this device do, do what it did, you know? Um, and it just, like I said, from a privacy standpoint, I'm a little concerned. And the thing is, it's like, this is, this is how the, the companies get you, you know, is they slowly integrate these things and they make them seem polite and nice and everything like this. And I know I'm going slightly tinfoil hat on this one too, <laughs> but the same thing is happening with like cars you know it's like the cars they, they they're, they're putting for the smart cars people are like oh no i don't want a car driving me blah 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 but they are being sneaky without bringing those features in there they're they're doing parking assist it's like oh i can't parallel park sure i'll let the car parallel park but that is automated driving when it comes down to it <laughs> city braking oh it's a safety feature so you don't hit some little kid it's still automated driving okay i think you've had <laughs> enough of this i'm going to take this away now <laughs> <laughs> So I yeah, mean, you need to take so, off your tinfoil hat. There, so buddy. the thing, so the thing is, are you, would you use an auto- autonomous car? Probably. Okay. Because I'm not crazy like you. Well, that is okay. It's great because then you're getting drunk and now you don't have to worry about dr- driving home. You yeah, know. No, no, no. So guess what? It works for you. I mean, that could solve some problems. The the thing about it is, it is something to consider when you're getting one of those devices, your Google Homes and your Alexas and Echoes and whatever is it's going to be a microphone that is essentially always on. You can set the sensitivity, you can change the wake word or something like that, but it's always listening, waiting for that wake word or waiting for something like that. I mean, this is just one thing in a, a sea of occurrences that are just going to get more and more common the more people buy them. We already have the one that um, it it was used in a murder investigation because there was data on the on Echo the, device. Well, on the servers, and, yeah, and they, they, they wanted, tried to subpoena it. They wanted it. that information because it had been recording, essentially, by their indication. Yeah. We have this one where somebody somebody innocuously just said, are you going to call the cops? It called the cops. It yeah. didn't even wait. It didn't ask for a confirmation. It just did it. It just did it. That's the, And you that's know. where it's like kind of like 1984 so tinfoil hat. If you, if you get one of these devices, that's the thing you have to keep in mind. It listens. It follows commands. And if it's in a common room and people are just speaking, it's like when my roommate got a, got a connect for the first time. He was trying out Skyrim and he was doing all the voice commands in Skyrim. And we figured out if we're just sitting there and anybody in the room can say quick save, it makes his game stutter for like half a second because it quick saved. So we all just sat around going quick save, quick save, quick save and completely destroyed his gaming experience until he turned off the connect. Or so, <laughs> or if you're watching a video on your Xbox or something like that, and you have some jerk in the video go Xbox turn off. Yeah. You know, now guess well, what? There's, there, there's a window that pops up going, are you sure you want to turn off? Yeah. It, it used, <laughs> yes. Yeah, they, they ask for confirmation for everything now. Yeah. And with, when it comes to the Alexa, like either you have the sensitivity, sensitivity turned down so much that it has to ask you to repeat what you said over and over and over again. Or you have it turned on so high that anybody, even this recording, can be like, Alexa, add a 10-gallon ba- barrel of lube to my shopping list and purchase now. If you're playing oh. that out loud, you better go cancel your Amazon order. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, is I mean, when, with these smart homes and everything like this, I mean, it's just like I said, it's like it's, it's funny to think about all, all the crazy things because you think, OK, great. This is protecting somebody's ha- somebody's life and everything like this. Mm-hmm. What happens when you get down to the pillow talk level? You know, that thing's still listening. <laughs> yeah. All you of know? a sudden you have, you know, reservations for really nice restaurants and. Yep. You know, it's like Frederick of Hollywood is sending you catalogs because you're like their favorite customer now. Right. Yeah. You got, uh, you know, <laughs> you go, you go, oh, baby. And it goes, do you want to check in on the kid? And, you know, the next thing, wah, 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 <laughs> you know, this is what technology is going to do when it's in it, when it's in its infancy. 
Is this going to do weird weird things like this? I, I mean, I don't know. It, right now, it's just because it's new technology and they're still implementing it. They're still trying to figure out what can be done with it. So yeah. uh, this is just part of the things that are going to bubble up where it's like, I want that to happen. I don't want that to happen. True. And it's going to start a conversation. That's okay. always good. If it starts a conversation, good. So with 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 smart technology like Alexa and the smart cars and mm-hmm. autonomous cars, mm-hmm. okay, you're willing to let a car drive you. Anybody else in the audience willing to let a car take con- complete control on the road and drive you? If it's a long trip, oh. yes. Okay, if that yes. If <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, if it's not designed by Uber, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so some people are starting to warm up to smart cars. What about having a smart car that flies you? Are you willing to let a computer fly you from one place in the city to the other? Because now, now we're not talking about ground. We're talking you're in the air. Fly. I would prefer that. You you would you would let Uber fly you. So, so what you're saying is you would fly if you were the only car that could fly. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the that's the argument that they make for the self-driving cars. If everybody had self-driving cars, cars could zip around at ungodly speeds because they're all computer controlled. They would everybody you would know where every single car is going, and they could go at a consistent speed. That is the argument for traffic right now. If everybody went at a consistent speed and signaled, then things would be. 10 times safer than they are right now. Yeah, but you got the human element. Human element is, is lacking at mm. times, to say the best. Yeah. There has to be a human element. I, yeah. I, I can kind of attest to it, honestly, because I have a pilot's license. So, uh, you have a pilot's so license. To it, you have to have some sort of control. Yeah. So, Uber is looking in the next 10 years to actually put out flying autonomous cars. Yeah, you won't have any control. It's not, that's not possible. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. There's no way. Unless you could, like... More accidents within the first year. So we got a gentleman with a pilot's license here going, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, really. Yeah. But there, I mean, think about that in Dallas. The Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex areas, where they kind of talked about this some. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how many people have been to, like, the metroplex, Dallas-Fort Worth, Arlington-type area and everything. That place is huge. Okay. And the people that drive on those roads there, they, I mean, super. You talk about super highways. I mean, th- we have like eight lanes wide going in one direction with exits and everything on there. It's ridiculous. And it takes an hour and a half to get from like Fort Worth side to Dallas side on, on all their stuff over there. And we're talking like multi, you know, millions and millions of people. It's like one of the largest areas in the nation for mm-hmm. like living in because you got Dallas, Arlington, Irving, uh, Fort yeah. Worth, and they've all just gone blah, 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 all, a, all together. It's a megalopolis, point. basically. Yeah. It's this huge collection. They do the same thing in the Phoenix area. It's like you, you can drive for hours and hours and never leave the buildings or the city itself. And you're, you're gone through like four different cities, essentially. That's- well, that's, yeah. I mean, that's Phoenix, though. Yeah, I mean, it's huge. not just, it's, it's pretty big, but I mean, not like nothing like the Texas, because the, well, when Texas I visited, does it right, you know? When I visited <laughs> Chicago this year, first time ever going to like a big major city or anything like that, I had, a, I had a lot of time accepting the sheer amount of people and buildings and traffic that were going on around me, because I've, you know, all I know is Albuquerque. Like, this is the most metropolitan that I've, I've lived in. Yeah. So going to someplace like Chicago and having to deal with all of that and thinking, and we took Uber all the time while we were there. Because we didn't have, we didn't drive. Um, the The idea that all of those con- all those cars at some point could be controlled by a computer, could be self driven, just doesn't make any sense, really. Unless it, unless everybody agrees, unless it's basically this is how cars, all cars are from now on. There's um, you know slow rollout or one or two vehicles dealing with the human element. It's never going to work because the car is going to have to learn how to protect human behavior. I mean, we've been trying to get computers to do that since the '80s. We've been talking about computers doing that since the '60s. Yeah. So. You know, right now, that's sort of a pipe dream. Yeah, it, it absolutely is a pipe dream right now. And they, mm-hmm. they've shown it with the smart cars because there's been like lots of wrecks and everything like that because of the human element. Um, and it's usually them crashing into the back of the smart cars. So there's been a lot of uh, there's been a lot of accidents that way. There's been a few where the smart cars have caused the accident, you know, but it's it's going to be interesting to see how this technology is going to come up in the world. Yeah. You know, but that's we're talking about like future tech there, right? Yeah. So pretty much. Well, you know, in, in the realm of going a little overboard with new technology and everything like that, apparently Australia has decided to give Super Mario Odyssey a uh, R18 rating. 
Wait a minute, wait a minute. A kid's game, Super yeah. Mario, well, is they getting... It, they gave it a PG rating in Australia, which is extremely harsh, uh, which means it's not recommended for children under 15 because it may contain material which some children find confusing or upsetting. This is a Mario game. Mario's going to be upsetting <laughs> to kids in Australia. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Mario. Yeah, there's a lot of the audience here going, <laughs> what? <laughs> boo. So, so uh, boo to Australia, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What was the reason for the PG content? Uh, the the current information is that it's uh, children will find it confusing or upsetting. Now, Odyssey features a game with a talking hat. Uh, Mario possesses other human beings, and he possesses humans. Yeah, he possesses humans like it's cartoon Mario in the real world. So he's like some Kirby. Of the a, they say murderous here, but I don't know if they're murderous. A gang of rabbits, the creatures from the the Wii launch title, raving rabbits. Uh, that force women to marry giant turtles and a jarringly detailed Tyrannosaurus with a mustache. The, like, <laughs> you know, this all sounds, you know, zany and madcap and fun for us, but, you know, for a kid kind of seeing that on the screen, controlling that or having having to deal with that in some sort of quick critical thinking kind of area, I mean, they might find it tra traumatic. I don't know. Australia has been notoriously kind of easy to upset. Yeah. So, I mean... Pretty much. Grand Theft Auto, yep. Yeah, Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is like an easy, an easy one to say, yep, in Australia, and they've done. Yeah, but it, it's easy to see that, and even here in the U.S., it gets like a mature rating from the ESRB here. So you're supposed to be, you know, uh, without parental uh, consent, not supposed to be able to buy mm -hmm. the game underneath the ESRB, but for. Yes. Was, the thing about it is. Yes. Yeah. Probably pretty, pretty close. Yeah. So yeah. we're we're getting so we're, we're going into a little bit of the ESRB because of now because of Mario in Australia. Come in, Mario. You have to be 15 plus to get now. That's that's silly. Because back yeah. back in our day, what was what was the it was Mortal Kombat mm. and Night Trap. Killer that, Instincts. And Ki well, Killer Instinct was on there too, but yeah. those were the games that started the whole ESRB rating, and this was the early '90s. Yeah, you know, keep, keep in mind for Nintendo, for a Nintendo game to get that kind of rating, Nintendo was the one who cut the blood out of Mortal Kombat. They, they, they you couldn't even turn it on with a cheat code. You know, they, yeah. they cut it out entirely. They cut the Nazi imagery out of Wolfenstein. Yep, they played down the gore and demonic. Uh, imagery in Doom when they released it on the Nintendo 64. Like, they have been always kind of reserved and pulled back when it comes to controversial imagery or putting out something like that. That's why a game uh, like DMA Design, which later became Rockstar, made massive money and, and attention with, the con with even just the original Grand Theft Auto. That being controversial, we had games like Manhunt that kind of studied things like that. We had Postal and Postal 2, which were just trying to be Trying edgy. to be edgy, yes. Yeah, and even moving into games like, you know, modern games like Today's Hatred, which is just a glorified kill fest for the sake of just rage-induced killing. And, you know, now we're starting to say, is this too much? Are we just going overboard, or is this some sort of catharsis for the average gamer? And, and all of that, we're got, we're, now we have to deal with murderous rabbits and tyrannosauruses with mustaches and talking hats and possessing humans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is that. The 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 way that you instantly get a child interested in anything is tell them they can't do it. Yes, yeah, pretty much. You say don't. Yeah, don't drink. Don't look at naughty things. Don't say bad words. Oh, they're gonna go out and do all of that. They're gonna do that this weekend. You know what's yeah. what's funny is that whole argument where you just said about are we pushing the limit? Is this too much? Mm -hmm. This exact same argument gets used year after year after year. And if you look at, like, was Mortal Kombat, Night Trap too much? I mean, you look at Night Trap for a full motion video, you know, uh, game. It was more or less, um, you know, for its time was pushing the limit. Yeah. But those what they call scantily clad girls nowadays, that's what they wear out on the street on a daily basis. Yeah, you know, the, the they, stuff. They, they wear less nowadays. They wear a tank top and like shorts or something like that, or a lot less out on the street nowadays. You know, they didn't show really anything in there with these girls potentially being abducted by vampires and 
blood and everything like that. And remember, did you suit Larry? Oh, yes. Yeah. When I was a kid, I was like, oh, I got Yes, Leisure Suit Larry. Yeah, those pixels. Oh. Like, oh, those, those pixels totally ruined my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, even that or Wolfenstein with its even you know, when, when you do, I remember this too. When you do actually get to having sex in Leisure Suit Larry, it blacks it out. It actually shows a censored box, like an yeah. animated censored box. But it shows a censored box. Like they they didn't even want to show that. You know, I don't think that there was even a controversy with that. It was just funnier to yeah. It was just funnier to censor that or something. I remember having to like sit there. I had memorized the answers to all the questions to say to prove that you were old enough to play that game. Because they asked you stuff like about the Carter administration and, you know, current events from maybe oh, like if you were 40 or 50 at the time that game came out. And I remember having those things memorized. I don't remember them now, but but they don't ask you those questions now. No, they don't. <laughs> that's, I mean, yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's the, ama- that's the amazing thing when you hear about something wacky like this happening with the rating system. Mm-hmm. Um, so, gonna, but talking about other wacky crazy yeah, let's, things let's move on so we we've <laughs> talked we talked for a couple of weeks in regards to coffee okay yep. on, on this podcast because i mean if you if you are uh if you are a geek or nerdy you have a tendency to drink co- coffee okay coffee and or caffeine we've been or... seeing all these stories about coffee and the people that drink their coffee black being more likely to be psychotic and so you guys you and you have been giving me a lot of flack mm-hmm. because i take my coffee black right yeah, you well, are psychotic. I, mean, I know you take it black. I never really give you any trouble for it because you, if you don't have your you don't coffee, want, you don't want to piss off the psycho, right? Yeah, you, if you don't have yeah. your coffee, I could see how that you know it's 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 more likely that people who drink coffee that don't get their coffee are psychotic than people who drink their coffee black. <laughs> oh, believe me, if he doesn't drink his coffee, he's psychotic. <laughs> so confirmation, yeah, got to have black coffee to not be psychotic, but. Yep. Apparently, there's a new study yeah. that came out this week because, of course, with with medical stuff, you got to have a study that's at the opposite end of the spectrum, right? So, what's the new one here? That uh, uh, people who drink coffee have a lower risk of dying from a host of causes, including heart disease, stroke, and liver disease. Uh, it's, uncle- it's unclear whether the health boost is down to the brew itself, but apparently, coffee in general does give some positive health effects. So, you know, you'll be crazy, but you'll be a healthy sort of crazy. So a healthy psychotic, <laughs> yeah. So it's, well, <laughs> well, you can start with coffee during the day because of its antioxidants. They use the wine for your heart in the evening to help with your system too. You get a glass, mm-hmm. so you know you're gonna be it balances out. Balance out exactly. <laughs> that's the nice. That's the great thing about about it, and the you know both of those have shown to be health effects. But they also show how they're detrimental to, so, to your health. What they actually say is that it's not the coffee itself. It's that coffee leads to people having healthier behaviors. Because you have what? the energy, you're more active. I, yeah. I do not have healthier <laughs> behaviors because of my coffee. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's because, co- uh, by and large, coffee drinkers use it as the energy boost to get on with their exercise or go, to go out walking around. And they tend to want to move around more as opposed to somebody who doesn't have that kind of stimulus. They kind of stay more sedentary. That's so, where wait, they're saying the health. That's where they're really? supposing that it's coming from. Yeah. Really? So they're saying that the coffee is good for you because it makes you more active. That means that Red Bull is going to be good for you. That's going to mean that soda is good for you underneath that and everything too. Yeah. I mean, Sugar is good at for least you. when I was going with the <laughs> antioxidant argument, you know, at least they're, oh yeah, that sounds good and healthy. No, you're just saying, hey, congratulations. You're going to get up and out of bed and actually do something today because of coffee. Yep. Oh my gosh. Coffee, 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 yeah, coffee. Yeah, that's coffee, pretty coffee. much it. Yeah. You need more coffee? Um, he needs more coffee. I, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I've had my coffee for today. So I'm doing great. Uh, let's see. Uh, I've got a couple. Of- I think you need coffee. You've been no. awfully quiet, James. Yeah. No, I've been talking. You've been talking? Yep. Has Was he there- said anything? I don't know. In, yeah. In my head. <laughs> <laughs> the beer. The beer. The beer. It's the beer. The beer. How is the beer here? Yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's good. Good. Yeah, check them out. Lizard Tail Brewing. Lizard Tail Brewing um, has their own a microbrewery. Of, yep, Eubank and Montgomery. Check check them out. They're really good. They've got all all sorts of types of micro brew from blondes to pale ales, IPAs. Uh, looks like some doubles, some darks, some that's stouts, annoying. You know. Yeah. So, and they I, sell St. Clair wine for you non beer drinkers. So I'm gonna ask I'm gonna ask this because we're getting down towards like the end of this here for uh, what we usually do for our podcast on uh, on online and with youtube and everything yeah 
since we have an actual audience, is there anything they want to see us potentially see if we actually know anything about with like technology or anime or computers or collectibles or video games? Any questions that you guys have out there? Nothing. Great audience. Thanks. Great audience. Yeah. <laughs> Give the audience a hand. They're not putting. They, our audience is so great. They don't want to put us on the spot when we put them on the spot. That's okay? absolutely great. That's amazing. That, I love that. It's a good room. I'm sorry. Like on the show. Yeah. In occasions. Yeah. On occasions. Yeah. yeah, we do. Yeah, usually it's other. Uh, we, every once in a while, we have other YouTubers on uh, that are within the local area um, on the show. Uh, not necessarily. We're not to the. We're not like even, I guess, semi-famous enough yet to have like uh, wow. s- movie stars or I game mean, designers or we, stuff like that. We invited like twenty people to show up, and uh, they're here. So, <laughs> I think our, our two closest things to movie yeah. stars are going to be. Uh, she goes by Boss Pander online, and she's been on Breaking Bad for uh, a couple of the episodes, um, <laughs> and then. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, deal with it. This, this. He's, he's actually been in a rather famous part of Breaking Bad. Yeah, that's yeah. that gentleman there's been on Breaking Bad too. So, <laughs> what's the matter? You don't want to own, own own your celebrity, sir? Wearing my underwear on TV didn't help. Ah, it wasn't even your underwear. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, um, so for for the Breaking Bad angle. You know, Boss Pander over here, if everybody remembers like the Jesse rehab scene where he's talking about like the dog and everything like that, you know, she's one of the ones that was uh, sitting there listening on the rehab circle. <laughs> so that's uh, that's something there. Yep. And do we do we want do we want to call out uh, Joe? He's already yeah. he basically half called him out. So Joe was the poor slob that had to sit there in his underwear during the during the party at Jesse's house with the pizza. He was the one that in the business suit yep. that ended up in his underwear. <laughs> so yeah, yep. give, give joy. Yeah. <laughs> you forgot about the money being thrown in my mouth. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, they threw, that, they threw that that movie money at you. Yeah, all that movie money. So a uh, couple of the little small tidbits to kind of wrap up on. Okay. Um, firstly, uh, big Xbox update. The, apparently, they added in the capability. They're going to take away rather quickly of giving you customized game avatars that you can upload to your Xbox. They're going to take this away. They're, well, no, they're going. They're giving it to us. I'm predicting they're going to take it away. Customized avatars, but you already had customized avatars on the Xbox. Yeah, but it was you had to choose from a, uh, either purchasing them off the store or unlocking them from video games or the base set of them ones. Now you can just upload an image. You can upload an image. Any image. Okay, and and make it oh, your, your, that's gosh. gonna get taken away. Yeah, that's gonna get fast. taken away fast. I know what people do on the air in that. I've been on this. I've been on the internet for way too long. You give people the ability to put this up. This is like what happened with like PlayStation with their cameras, where there was all of a sudden you had people flashing the cameras and everything else like that, and that's mm-hmm. like boom, started taking that stuff away real fast. Yep. So, this is going to be and the, other, X, the Xbox crowd's worse. This is going to be this going to be dicks dick, everywhere. Dicks everywhere. Dicks everywhere. Dicks everywhere. Um, Good job, Microsoft. <laughs> the internet is full of dicks. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it doesn't matter. They're going to still put them out Look, there. Look, so. Call of Duty players don't count as the dicks on this one. Okay. Yes. Oh. So, oh. The other big thing oh, no. that with this we're update. Ass-hats. Yeah, we're ass hats. The other big thing is apparently now you can actually. Uh, assign your account to a specific Xbox One controller. What? So if you if you turn on the Xbox with that controller, it automatically signs in that account. That's dangerous, especially yeah. <laughs> in a college house. Oh my gosh, you're going to be able to troll and ru- ruin somebody's KD ratio so fast. Well, I mean, it, it makes you just kind of keep your controller like you keep your car keys, and I they are trying to. From the <laughs> yeah, it's like you got the kids' controllers and everything else like that, too. And you can still sign into your account the normal way as well. It's just having that one controller that just automatically signs in your main account. It, it's, I've, you know, they're trying they're trying to think out of ways to make it more convenient for people, I guess. Yeah, it's convenient until you have some, some friend that's a jerk. Um, moving on, of all things... Of all things. Of all things, Half-Life, the original Half-Life, the very first one, got an update last week. So original Half Life is from 1997. So we're talking about a 20 year old game. It got an update last week. Got patched. Yeah, uh, they and it was just a uh, kind of a standard patch. So 
the the patch notes are fixed to crash when entering uh, malformed strings into the game console. Fixed to crash, yeah, crash fixes, fixing save files. Like they didn't really add in anything. They didn't expand on anything. They just made the game more stable. More stable. For, yeah. So apparently people are still playing Half-Life enough that they felt patching it 20 years later is still relevant. Well, there is there is a mod, I think, uh, Black Mesa, mm-hmm. uh, that is basically a redesign of Half-Life on the Half-Life 2 engine. So that way you can play the original one with the so source engine versus it, the original engine. It could engine. be that you need that, that source kind of thing. Uh, get that going. But and my computer just shut off, and I can't remember the last two things that I had to go, except I know the Mass Effect Andromeda just released a playable demo, which you sign up, you activate it, you have 10 hours to play as far in the game. You get you get through the first major planet that they send you to, and then it says, buy the game. Really? Yeah. So, so that's pretty bad. I'm enjoying that, actually, when it comes to Xbox games. Like these, they're, they're yeah, they did. A good amount. I played Prey for yeah. one hour demo. I played for four and a half hours. So wow! Yeah, you get you get ten hours. They give you three. They give you three, uh, un, three systems to explore, and at least one planet to explore. Um, and in, and in that, move through the story and see everything start up. So you go through character creation. You make the decisions for your character that would affect the plot. You meet core people from there, and it's not a it's not a, a dumbed down or removed experience. I actually do support demos nowadays, especially with games being dubious because. You know their trailers are their their trailers are pre-rendered. Their gameplay footage is is directed or curated. So if they can give me a chance to take the game and play it myself, I'm more for supporting that. And I might actually even pick up Mass Effect Andromeda right now because it's on sale. So it's about, it's half off right now. I might pick it up just for the fact that they put out a demo. I want to support that kind of behavior. Well, you know. It could be worse. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's why they did. Steam started doing refunds within the first two hours because games were getting dubious. There was no way to demo them, and yeah. you know that way people could refund the games. And mm-hmm. lastly, like No Man's Sky. Oh man, no, <laughs> we have a running gag with No Man's Sky. We started our show on No Man's Sky, and it seems like it just bubbles up every single time we record a show. There's something new to talk about with No Man's Sky. Thankfully, nothing's happened this time, so we had to get it in somewhere. Right. The last thing, and the big thing, is SoundCloud is in trouble. Yeah, SoundCloud. They're shutting down. 50 days of working cash left for SoundCloud. And this is like the one of the premier services mm-hmm. for podcast. Yep. Podcast, online music. Um, there are competitors to like Spotify or Pandora. Yeah, Spotify is dying too, but yeah. SoundCloud has just announced they're they're going to be the first one out the gate. Yeah, they really. said last week that they were cutting staff by forty percent, and they had a staff of three hundred people. Mm-hmm. And then it came out later this week they have fifty days of working cash left. This is a company that's been around since two thousand eight, and it's about to tank. Yep. Wait, what company? SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah. Really? Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's so yeah, they're, they're not doing good. They're on live support right now. No. No. I mean, yeah. Yeah, the uh, the first one to really kind of bite it that I liked was Groove Shark because you could go there and make your own playlist. And that actually ended up in so much legal trouble because of licensure and everything like that. The guy who created it committed suicide from legal pressure. So, you know, that that's a big RIAA kind of like argument and stuff like that. But uh, Pandora has been going strong. Uh, Spotify is not doing too hot. But SoundCloud, yeah, apparently they're they're on life support. They're in the throes of pl- shuttering. Yeah, and that's yeah. and that's interesting because like in global rig rankings on Alexa for like website visits, they're like r- right at the verge of the top hundred. Mm-hmm. I mean, they've had a steady increase, 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 you know, over the last couple of years, and all of a sudden it's just like we don't know how to make money off this. <laughs> yeah, Oops. they didn't monetize. Yeah, gotta monetize. Gotta this monetize, it or it just has, or they haven't been able to. But I think that's it for me, though. I okay. think that's it. We yeah. are. We've been doing I this think, for about an hour. Yeah, we've been, we've been doing, doing this for a year. Well, yeah, year. true. Let's get let's get applause for that. We've been doing this for a year. Yeah. <laughs> so this has been the uh, the GAC podcast where we discuss games, anime, computers, and collectibles, but not necessarily all in a week. Uh, and you can listen to us on Apple, mm-hmm. uh, iTunes. You can listen to us on Google Music in audio-only format. Yep. And then we are up on YouTube at uh, Jenny Fedora Reviews. is the channel that the podcast is on, along with our unboxings and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then we have 
Jenny Fedora Productions for where we talk about rants and let's plays and video games and you know the stuff general content the general content where we're a little bit more foul mouthed and uh, doesn't get as much ads for some reason so a little bit of separation yeah. there between the semi professional and the non professional but uh, I do want to say thank you to everybody who's followed us supported us given us subscriptions or tips or even just commented or liked us on on YouTube or VidMe or whatever and. You know, that's what really kept us going. Even if it's just two people said that they listened to a show, that's what we like to do. We like to come together and talk about this stuff, record it, put it out there. And we're going to keep doing this. We're looking, I'm looking forward to the next year and the year after that and the year after that. But also, thank you guys for showing up, coming in and joining us, supporting us on this year celebration. I know you probably didn't expect that showing up here, considering most of the people we didn't invite, <laughs> we invite didn't show. So um, thank you very much. Let's get a thank you, audience. Let's go ahead. Yeah, and thank, thank you, the audience. Now. Thank you. You guys were awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. Otherwise, uh, you know, rate, review, upvote, follow, like, subscribe, comment, all that other stuff. And we'll see you guys next week. Next week. Later, guys.